Hi folks, welcome to The Breaky. My name's Henry, and today we're going to be continuing on with our custom operating system ROM adventure in going in looking at keyboard polling. Yes, that's right. In order for us to be able to interact with the computer, we need to be able to typeity typeity take over the worldy. Oh, wait a minute, the megalomania needed to wait. Okay, we'll do the megalomania later, but we'll go ahead and look at the typeity typeity now. You know, if you look at a regular old, you know, bog standard keyboard that we're all used to using, these things have a these things have a matrix in them, which is to say that you've got a switch that you push down that connects a row to a column, and then a signal is sent down either the row or the column in a polling fashion, and then when it runs into one of these switches, it goes ahead, it sends that signal back up to wherever it needs to go. And those are then grabbed and processed, and in a PC, in a PC style keyboard, and in most modern, most all modern keyboards, you don't directly deal with, the computer does not directly deal with the matrix. The computer actually listen, is talked to by a microcontroller, and that microcontroller is what directly deals with the matrix. And any of you who have ever built any keyboard projects before are, are quite aware of this, especially if you've used, you know, like um, MicroPython or anything like that to go ahead and build your, uh, to build your keyboard. Okay, so in the, in the TRS-80 color computer, one of the peripheral interface adapters is set up so that it will, it will be able to set up to handle the keyboard matrix. And this is a color computer one schematic. In the color computer two, it's pretty much the same. And in the color computer three, you have a few extra keys in there that are, that are used in these areas that don't have them for the one and two. The way it's set up is the polling signal is sent from the B side and the polling si signal is received by the A side. Or do I have that backwards? Just a moment. Let me look at that. Let's see. Okay. Yeah, that's the B side. Um, the B side sends the signal, and the A side receives the receives the resultant signal. So the idea being that what you do is you throw your signal out on this side, and then once you get that signal on, say, keyboard column eight, let me go back to the schematic here. Keyboard column eight, which is from PA seven, which is right over here. Say you're holding down the O key. If you receive, if you throw this out on keyboard column eight, you throw this out on the O key, and now you're going to get your receipt, your resultant signal on bit uh, on bit one of the A side. Now here's where things get interesting because okay, because on the A side of the peripheral data, um, one of the correction data direction, okay, okay. On the A side, you'll find that in the input mode, the internal pull-up resistor on these lines resists, uh, represents a maximum of 1.5 stand, uh, standard TDL loads. The, okay, here's the key bit, internal pull-up resistor. What that means is that the PIA on the A side, where we're using the inputs from the rows, is defaults to being a high signal is a lack of information. That is to say a high signal and nothing's happening. You actually have to ground out the line in order to get viable data into that. Now, what does that mean? Again, we'll go back to our uh, schematic here. And what that means is with this always having plus five volts on all the columns or on all the rows, if you put plus five volts on a column, ain't nothing going to be detected. But if you put a, if you ground out a column, now you can have the current flow happen and you will wind up with 
A0 hitting one of the lines. It will pull it down to ground potential, which means that this entire setup is, I'm going to call it negative sense. You use a zero to pull a line and you look for a zero on that line to indicate that there is actually a key pressed. Okay, so that's gotcha number one, is inverted sense. Now, gotcha number two is going to come in from when we go, when, when we work on our synchronization. So this is raw switches. One of the problems we have with raw switches is that they're very noisy, okay? So you press down on that switch and you don't get a nice clean, it's a nice clean, okay, I pressed it down so now I've got a zero and I left it up so now I've got a one. You press it down and it goes because there's these make breaks that just happen all throughout the thing. And again, anybody who's built a keyboard or built any type of key entry type of thing will know that this debounce issue exists. So we need to debounce because it's bouncing the keystroke. So these do not have hardware debounce available to us. We can't, I mean, I mean, we could go ahead and build in like an RC thing or something like that and put it on the, you know, put it on a custom keyboard, but it's not going to worry about that. The way it's done in the Coco ROM is it samples the is it samples the same key multiple times and it makes sure that it's got three samples in a row that are I think believe it's three samples in a row that have the same value. So once it's got three of them, then okay, Bob's your uncle, we're good to go. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little bit of a cheat here. Rather than going for multiple samples, what I'll do is I'll pull the keyboard once per frame. This should solve the problem of debouncing in such a way that we don't have to worry about having multiple poles or things of that nature, and we don't have to worry about missing keystrokes because things are moving too slowly. I mean, sure, there are some folks who are typing at like a 60, 70, 80 words a minute, but even so, it should be fine for for the average for the average user. All right. So with that said, we've got to set up the PIA to read that, and we've got to set up the and we've got to set up the synchronization, which brings us to the gotcha about the synchronization. So when we're using a sync signal, what we're going when we what the sync signal does, and I have to pull this up now because I went and forgot to. Where's my list of books? There we go. So the trick is that when we want to synchronize something to the video uh, to the video frequency or to the uh, to the frame rate, we can do one of two things. We can set up an interrupt uh, routine or we can set up a synchronization routine. And um, Coco Town has shown some wonderful videos on both of those. I'll put links in the description to those videos. Um, but basically, I don't want to have to deal with setting up and dealing with a deal dealing with an inter interrupt service routine. So instead, what I'll do is I'll work with a synchronization routine. And that is, if we look at the sync keyword and the sync instruction itself, it waits for an interrupt. Simply halt CPU into execution until a peripheral device requests an interrupt. Any interrupt clears the halt. Interrupt disabled, blah, 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 the processor will respond to it, stacking the register transfer to the vector address. Okay, so here's the key trick. If the interrupt is enabled and lasts three cycles or more, the processor will respond to it. So this implies that we don't have to worry about enabling the interrupt. At least not at, the, at least not on the CPU level. We can go ahead and mask the, that interrupt. And at the same time, sync, um, sync is normally used with interrupts disabled as a halt instruction, which is cleared by any interrupt input. So this makes it so that we don't even have to worry about 
like turning on interrupts, servicing interrupts, or things of that nature. We can just shut all that down. But what we do have to do is we have to have the interrupt generator up working and doing things. And that's where we're going to come in. Uh, let's see. Yep, we'll use this one to what the VDG is sending us. Okay, and that's actually, to a certain extent, that's not only coming from the VDG, that's also coming from the SAM. If I recall correctly, I believe the SAM is uh, handling that. Where are you? Okay. Yeah, all right. So, horizontal sync sheet to... Okay, I'm incorrect. That's not coming from the SAM. That's coming from the VDG, and it's only coming from the VDG. And that is your field sync right here, your field sync. This signal is the signal that the VDG sends every time it completes a frame. Or, yeah, every time it completes a frame. And that goes to sheet three. And if I look for sheet three, I think that's sheet three. That's sheet three. Let's see where that comes in. All right. We have field sync that comes in to CB1. So this interrupt is handled on the B side. What does that mean as far as what we need to do? Well, let's look at what the PIA um, data sheet says. Okay, it's a little bit more ter uh, more uh, terse in the Coco manual, but if we look at do to do to do do here we go. Okay, we're looking at CA one CB CB one. This is our control. Okay, so disables uh, disables IRQ A uh, if, if it's if this is zero. It disables IRQ in, uh, MPU input by that item. So that is to say that for the control register B, we're going to want to set that to 1 in order to enable the interrupt at the level of the PIA. Now we are going to want to disable or mask the interrupts at the level of the CPU. So for the B1 here, bit one, this is part, this one handles the, what, what the transition is using. On a zero, it's set by a high to low transition. On a one, it's set by a low to high transition. So let's go ahead and look at the COCO uh, manual real quick. And I'll go to the memory map. So this is the control of the field sync clock, and this is the control of the horizontal sync clock. We want to zero that out, we want to zero that out, we want to zero this out, and, or we want to one this out, and we want to zero this out. Okay, great. So that'll set it every time we wind up with a field sync. There's another gotcha to all of this, which is, all right, now we've got the field sync interrupt flag. Sure, we're fine. Once we set this to one, Every time this thing, every time this thing goes off, in this case, uh, sets on a following edge, it will set this flag. However, in order to clear the interrupt flag, you can't just write to the control register. He says, "Looking for oh, looking for what to do with that." Okay. Right here, this is the IRQ. Uh, this is the IRQ one flag, which is what um, this is using right here goes high on active transition of CB1, automatically cleared by MPU read of output register B. So in order to clear that register, we have to read the, the, out, uh, we have to read the output register. Now, that's not a big deal in the slightest. It's really not a big deal in the slightest. The, it's just, it's a whole bunch of trickery that we're not, necess that not necessarily thinking about because, oh, like, oh, look, we're used to thinking positive sense. We just sent five volts through, five, and that's not going to work. And we're used to doing a synchronization where maybe, oh, there's the flag. I clear it by doing this. No, you got to speak the language of the PIA in order to make it work. So with that, let's go ahead and get this started. So we've got our FF loaded, we've got that loaded. 
I'm going to, just to look at this, I'm going to go, just, I'm going to open it up with this. Uh, open up the, I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and look and see what the Coco is doing with this as far as some of the other registers. Most importantly, I want to see what the stack register is doing, what the stack pointer is doing. Run that. Okay. So we are at A00E, which is, let's see, that's where we wanted this to kind of start. Um, and the stack register is at zero. Now, that's going to cause some problems later, I'm sure. So if I have five and go ahead and run this, stack register is remaining, up, remaining at a zero. And I don't want it to be there because when you push something onto the stack, what it does is it actually decrements the stack, the, the stack pointer um, value. So I am going to change that. in here. Transfer ADP. We've already set our, our direct register, so we're going to load stack, and I'm going to say 100. Okay, 100x. So that'll give me a stack, that'll give me a stack starting at one, uh, 0, 100. All right. So we've cleared out, we've already put, um, cleared out the PIA control registers, we've set the PIAIO directions, we've set PIA control registers for operation. Okay, now let me check and make sure that I've set that I need, what, let's see, I'll use this, this will make, this will be relatively easy. Come on. There we go, that's where I want you. Okay, and I want to look at this one. So I want to see what we had with FFO3, FFO2, FFO1. Okay. Da, 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 da. Okay, control registers. One and three got a 34, which is, da, 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 yep, okay. And, all right, and that's a normally one with these two being zero. So in this particular case, what I'm going to want to do is since, come on, you stay on the top. Since we want to actually activate this, the field sync clock IRQ, we'll bring this up one. Yeah, because three is the one we want to change. Well, NK, because that's an even number. I want bit zero to be one, so yeah, there we go. And then we'll store A there, and that should go ahead and take care of that. Now, the next thing I'm going to need to do is clear out all of the uh, all of these interrupt bits because here's the thing about the sync signal. The sync, the, the sync instruction, as long as, um, as long as these flags are, as long as these flags are, or not that, these uh, flags here, the heart, like the interrupt flags are set, as long as they are set, then we're going to wind up with an interrupt signal being sent to the processor. We have to reset those before those will, will Stop telling the try, stop trying to tell the processor to stop what it's doing and do something else. Okay, so we are going to clear out the interrupt flags. Yep. Okay. Beautiful. So that should clear everything out. So now we have a nice clean slate. All right, so the SAM, we set that up, FFC0, and we clear alpha on that one. Uh, we'll clear A on that one. Blah, 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 blah. Set the text semi 4 which is good. Video memory offset. Okay, and so we're going to be doing something different here, so I'm going to get rid of the Hello World characters there. 
and we're going to get rid of the message. Let's see, we're going to get rid of that loop right there. Okay. Okay, so we're at CLS. Now, we have set up the SAM, we have set up the VDG operation bits like we did last time. The next thing that I'm going to want to do is actually start pulling the keyboard. And we're going to want to pull the keyboard within the synchronization. So, here we're going to go ahead and set up our main loop. The first thing the main, that's going to happen in the main loop is we're going to wait for that we're going to wait for that interrupt pulse. And then once we got the interrupt pulse in, we're going to load it, we're going to look at, um, we're going to clear it out by loading and loading that in. And remember, we're only using the B side here, so we only grab that particular side. There's a little thing that I'm going to do here. We're not going to just, like, and try and translate all at once. What I'm going to do is demonstrate as it were, put in like a demonstrator, so that I can see when things are being pressed and when they are not being pressed so that I know what's going on. So here we're going to start with the begin top of video uh, the beginning of video memory and in X and this is important right here. While I'm thinking about it, let me make sure that the condition code register is set up with those interrupts masked. Um, let's see. Six, eight, or nine registers. There we are. That's what I want to look at. Okay. So I want to mask off the FERC, which is in bit six, and the IRQ, which is in bit four. So that's going to be a, let's see, eight, nine, a, b. So that's going to be b, no, eight, nine, a. That's going to be an a, f. All right. Eight, nine, a. Yep, a, f. So let's back, get back over here. Where the heck is it? There it is. Okay. And CC AF. Okay. And that should take care of masking those. So let's see. Where were we? We were at the polling. Okay. Now, again. We're, I'm going to not only pull, but I'm going to present them on the screen so that I can see what's going on with that. So I'm loading a, a with FE. Here's what I'm planning on doing. I'm planning on rotating through until the uh, rotating through until I wind up with all of them done. So by putting an FE in here, I put a zero in bit one, and that not only will Activate the for activate bit uh, or zero. I'm sorry, a zero and bit zero. That will not only activate bit zero of the, the uh, bit zero of the B side of the B side of the B side for the keyboard columns, but that also serves if I do this right and I use the carry register, the carry flag, I can actually I can make this shift through. And if it shifts through carry or rotates through carry, when the carry goes to zero, I know I'm done. All right. So aside from just loading A with that, the next thing I'm going to do is or CC. The carry flag is the, let's see, the carry flag is the first bit or is the zeroth bit, I should say. So that's going to be a one. Beautiful. Okay. So. Now for the poll loop, and this uh, now for the polling loop itself. So the first thing I want to do is I want to send that out to uh, out. Uh, let's see, store A. O2. So that's going to go ahead and send a signal, and then 
the A side will have the result of the poll for that column. So this should have the mask of the rows that we've pressed. Again, inverted sense. So we're going to load B with that value. So this gives me pretty much the full thing. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven that I need to look at, and that's the joystick comparison in input. So, and just kind of walk through those. And each one of these, each one of these steps, rather than put in a loop, I'm just going to go ahead and unroll the loop. All right, so I'm going to make sure that what I'm using, where I'm using the, the carry flag, I'm going to make sure that I've got that saved because I'm going to be shifting this value in B around a, a bit later. So push S, CC, all right, great. And now I do a, I'm going to zero out the value um, that X is pointing to. Now this has been in the video memory and there's a reason that I'm doing this. I'm doing this to make sure to reset it to the value that it originally had, uh, or reset it each time it goes through the loop, I should say. So, now the next trick is, I'm going to shift the B register off to the right so that I can look at that zeroth bit and see what it says. Thus the reason that I had to um, push that up there. So, LSR, logical shift right B, and that's going to work for that. All right, and so the next thing is, if the carry bit is set, then I do not have a key press because that was a one that was shifted off. So. Okay, but if the carry bit is clear, meaning that I did have a key press, what I'll do is very simply complement the value in X, which will basically turn it from a zero to an FF, or at least it should. Okay, and then the next thing after that is going to be, we go, whoop, come on, we increment X, so that we can go to the next one, rinse and repeat. So we don't have to push S again, we don't have to clear, uh, uh, we do, okay, so we start at that. All right, so that completes that one. And at this point, we need to move the next column, so here, we need to, let's see, we need to, since we're going to the next column, what I should be doing is going to the next, uh, uh, going to the next row on the screen, which means that I've gone through seven of those so far. Let's see, so I need to make sure that I go from zero to 20. So that is zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. So that should be, Yep, that's going to be A. Okay. X, one A, comma, X. Oh. There we go. And then, now that I've done that, and we need to shift over, like, what we're doing, with, uh, or what we're doing with the columns, let's go ahead and get our condition code register back. So that we've got that that bit that we had from uh, up here, where we were setting up the uh, or where to go. Do, 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 do. Yeah, that bit up here from the what's in the A register. Okay, which bit are we looking at? As it were, pull SCC. 
Okay. Now we have to rotate this through. So we're going to rotate left and rotate just like logical shift. Rotate, um, rotate, uh, rotate uses the carry register, uh, carry flag, and it rotates through the carry flag. So let's take a look at that real quick to, so you can see what's going on with it. And I'm using a, let's see, I'm having to rotate to the left because I need that zero bit one more to the left. Where'd you go? Roll. Okay, rotate left. Rotate accumulator or memory byte left through carry. Instruction spe uh, rotates the specified accumulator. Here we go. Here's the diagram. Yeah. So the carry bit goes into wherever the heck it's going. That gets rotated through, and that comes back, and that um, bit comes back into this uh, carry bit. Okay. So with that, we're going to rotate left, and that's going to be up. Oh, A, okay, and then if we're still, if we've still got that carry bit in there, if that's set, um, if we haven't finished, then we need to go right up, um, right on back to the top at uh, main loop. Or, I'm sorry, um, I'm sorry, at pole loop. And then if it's if the carry's clear, well, we want to continue to pull, so okay, there's in, and so that's the branch always. And that should take care of it. FTB start. Let's make sure that that's makes sense. Start is up here. Yep. All right. That should do it. So let's go, let's give this a, let's give this. I won't name that up. All right. So let's get this out of the way. See how it works. That was interesting. Okay, so that's fine. So let's go ahead and if, uh, uh, let's see, I need to. Okay, so that's odd. What set the interrupt flag? Check that out right there. Something went very much awry. All right, so we'll just go ahead and uh, try this again and see what's going on with it. Our FERC and IRQ are set. That gets rid of those. Load X. Right. One hour later. Well, that wasn't doing what it was supposed to be doing. And how in the world? What's going on on, pay, on the zero page here? Oh, got it. That's... It's it's stacking things because it's processing the interrupt. I don't know why it's processing the interrupt, and I don't know how in the world that happened. All right, so these all no longer have that's that in there. Okay, F and I are now gone. But as soon as I and C seed, that set that right there.
All right. So let me try this again. You know what I did? I screwed it up. That's exactly what I did. <clears throat> I forgot that masking the interrupt and uh, the interrupt and FIRQ means setting those bits, not clearing those bits. Let me fix this and see if that fixes some things. Uh, we'll do a force quit on that. Control Q. All right. And instead of doing NCCAF, we do an or CC. And let me see where those bits are. It's that's going to be a four and a five. Okay. That's going to be or CC 50. All right. So there's that now. That should take care of that, that problem. That was silly of me. And let's get back over to It's working. <laughs> it's working. Yes. This is a good thing. This makes me happy. Okay. All right, beautiful. So let's go, let's take a gander at. Um, where is it? There it is. Let's look at the matrix and see what we get. So at, oh, so hang on. If I recall correctly. Yep, that's exactly what we want to see. And H, that's doing that correctly. X zero. Eight. Enter. Yup. Okay. D two. Yeah. Okay. It's working. We got keyboard input. Yeah. <laughs> That makes me happy. Um, so our next step is going to be to parse that keyboard input and turn it into, well, maybe ASCII, but maybe not at first. I'm not sure how I'll play that game because ultimately what needs to happen is it needs to be displayed to the user. So if we need to display it to the user, then it needs to be parsed into the character codes that the VDG uses which is not quite necessarily ASCII. It might be, but it may not quite necessarily be ASCII. Uh, probably close enough, though, that you know we can work with it, as long as I'm not worried about the lowercase characters, which don't exist on the T1, or which don't exist on the uh, original VDG. Um, yeah, but... Okay. So, we're going to go ahead and get that rolling next time and see what we can do about implementing a minor, a, a small REPL. And if we're particularly lucky in the next episode, um, we'll have a basic add, subtract, maybe even multiply, divide calculator that works off of a stack because it's fourth.
Thanks so much for coming around today and for spending some time with, uh, with me here at the Breaky. I really do appreciate it. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Let folks know about this. If this is something you think they might like. If this is something you think they might not like, then don't worry about it. If you like it, great. I'm happy. And so, just really appreciate you all coming around. Hope to see you again next time at the Break Key. So here we are with where we last left our heroes. Excuse me. Now that's interesting. This is it's because the screen back there is blue and it's rendering this thing as black. It's not see-through, but it's definitely rendering it as black. That's very interesting. Yeah. Oh, crud. I always hit the wrong blessed button.